Shalom Israel, Brother Reggie Jr. here. So today, guys, I'm going to go ahead and read Genesis chapter 31. Just picking up from where I left off from last time. And with that, guys, let's go ahead and get right into this thing. Genesis chapter 31, and I'm going to read verses 1 through 3. And it says, And he, meaning Jacob, heard the words of Laban's son. So now we see, according to verse 1, that Rachel and Leah actually had brothers. Now, they weren't uh, mentioned before initially, but they are mentioned here. We don't know how many brothers that Rachel and Leah had, but we just know that they do have brothers, right? And it says, and he heard the words of Laban's sons saying, Jacob have taken away all that was our father's, which is a lie. And of that which was our father's, he have gotten all this glory. So they're accusing pretty much Jacob of stealing uh, or taking away or basically stealing uh, Laban's uh, cattle and his flocks when really in, in with when really all the Lord did was greatly increase the cattle that Jacob had and greatly decrease the cattle that Laban had. But because of that, uh, Laban's son, and we're going to find out Laban as well, they were basically salty about it. Okay. Verse two, and it says, and Jacob beheld the countenance of Laban. So he looked at Laban. Okay. And it says, and behold, it was not towards him as before. So all that smiling he was doing when he looked at, uh, Laban, nah, after he increased and now he was on his way to leave Laban, now Laban got the look of anger. He pissed. Okay. Three. And the Lord said unto Jacob, return unto the land of thy fathers and to thy kindred. And I will be with thee. So now we see now that, <laughs> now that, uh, Laban can no longer siphon the blessings off of Jacob. Now Laban is upset. Now Laban is mad. Now Laban's sons, now they got a big mouth. Because see, as, as long as the ball was rolling, as long as they were being blessed because God was with Jacob and he was working for Laban and through that came all of their blessings, you know, they didn't have a problem with Jacob. But as soon as Jacob wanted to, you know, be his own man, take Rachel, Leah and, you know, his cow and stuff and leave and go on his journey. Now they're upset. Why? Because they meal ticket and have been cut off. And that's the same thing our enemies do in the lands today. As long as we run in that football, that basket, as long as we run in that book, football form, as long as we shooting them hoops form, as long as we boxing and all of that form and making them all of this money, hey, they all smiles, give you whatever they want. You know, they happy talk to you. But let you get up one day and decide, hey, I'm not finna run this ball for you no more. I ain't shooting no more hoops for you, make you no more money. I'ma separate. I'ma get my own lead. I'ma make myself money. I'ma go independent. Watch how they do. Watch how them heathen do. They be mad as hell, boy. Who this nigga think he is? Well, that's the same thing, same attitude Laban basically got right here. Which uh, I'm not even, un I don't even know why Laban was mad anyway, because Laban uh, deceived Jacob and basically was using Jacob to get them blessings. Remember, because Jacob wanted Le uh, Rachel, um, so he worked seven years for Rachel, but Laban ended up giving him uh, Leah. And he did that on purpose so that way he could work another seven years for Rachel. But ain't the Lord, the Lord is hilarious. The Lord always going to get you back because what did the Lord do? All of that stuff that he got off of deceiving Jacob, all he did was give it right back to Jacob. And now they are upset at that. But let's continue reading, guys. I'm going to read verses uh, four through 13. And it says, and Jacob sent and called Rachel and Leah unto his flock. So he called them five. And he said unto them, I see your father's countenance that it is not toward me as before. So yeah, all of that BS smiling he was doing and 
you know, all that jolliness, it went right out the window. Right when he could no longer use Jacob and he didn't have a use for him, his true self came out. Verse, okay, we still got to finish it. It says, I see your father's countenance that it is not towards me as before, but the God of my father have been with me. And ye know that I have, and ye know that with all my power, I have served your father. And he did it with all um, his power too, because he did it initially for Rachel. Verse seven, and your father have deceived me and changed my wages 10 times, but God suffered him not to hurt me. And he did. He wanted to hurt Jacob, man. When Jacob decided, hey, you know what? It's time to part ways and all of that. Laban's first intention was to do some, but God made sure that he didn't do it. Okay, verse 8, and it says, If he said thus, the speckle shall be thy wages, then all the cattle bear speckle. And if he said thus, the ring stripe, meaning the stripe, shall be the higher, then bear, then bear all the cattle ring stripe. Thus God have taken away the cattle of your father and given them to me. Yeah, because the little bit that Jacob got from Laban, that which Laban didn't want, the speckled, the spotted, because, you know, back in them times, they didn't want anything that was speckled, spotted, striped, nothing like that. They wanted that which was pure. Well, Jacob ended up getting that, and the Lord ended up increasing uh, Jacob's cattle and flock exponentially. But when it came to Laban, Laban's cattle became feeble, became weak, and became few. And because of that, Laban was upset. And now him and his sons was accusing him of taking away his cattle, which we know that was not the case. All you got to do is read uh, Genesis 30, which was the previous chapter, and you'll know that that was not the case at all. It's just they're full of envy and rage because they're blessing siphoning has been cut off verse 9 and it says thus God have taken away the cattle of your father and have given them to me and it came to pass at the time that the cattle conceived that I lifted up my eyes and saw in a dream and behold the rams which leaped upon the cattle were ring straight speckled and grizzled and the angel of God spake unto me in a dream saying Jacob and I said, here am I. Verse 12. And he said, lift up now thine eyes and see all the rams which leap upon the cattle are ring strict, speckled and grizzled. For I have seen all that Laban doeth unto thee. So the Lord, he seen all that stuff Laban was doing, uh, tricking Jacob, getting Jacob to work extra for him and stuff. God seen all of that stuff. Hey man, that's why when you go to work, your boss is jipping you out of time and money won't pay you and stuff. Listen, you rolling with the most high. Hey, the most high see it all. And guess what? He going to deal with your managers, your supervisor. He going to deal with them all. And he going to make sure that you come out on the other end blessed and they're going to be cursed. I've seen this all too many times. Verse 13. And it says, I am the God of Beth El where thou anointest the pillar and where thou vowedest a vow unto me. Because remember, uh, Jacob asked the Lord to in Bethel to be with him on his journey and all the things that he may encounter and endure. And the Lord was, and he says, now arise and get thee out from this land and return unto thy kindred. Okay. But make no mistake, guys, Jacob didn't take anything from Laban that he said he wasn't going to take. OK, he took that which Laban did not want. He took exactly that which Laban did not want. But of course, we know Laban man just full of envy wouldn't be the right word for this case. Jealous. He's jealous. That's what it is. And I'm telling you, uh, the Bible tells you, I uh, forgot what the scripture is, but it says uh, jealousy is the rage of a man, okay, and naturally a woman too. 
But jealousy is the rage of a man. When a man is jealous of you, man, they want to hurt you. In Laban, he wanted to hurt Jacob, but the Lord suffered him not to. Why? Because the Lord was with Jacob, just like he said he would be. So now, uh, let's go ahead and look at verses 14 through 16, because we're going to find out something about Laban. Okay, let's look, 14. And Rachel and Leah answered and said unto him, because... Uh, Jacob basically told Rachel and Leah everything that happened. But watch what Rachel and Leah said. They knew something about their father. She says, is there yet any portion or inheritance for us in our father's house? And the answer for that was no. 15. Are we not counted of him strangers? And why did they say that? For he hath sold us and have quite devoured also our money oh so we find out that Laban was a covetous man and we find out because see it said that Rachel and Leah said he have sold us in other words Rachel and Leah were given over to Jacob not because he knew Jacob was a good guy and he wanted to just give his daughters over to something good even though Laban tried to act like that's what it was no the reason why Laban did what he did is because he basically sold his daughters for a blessing because remember Jacob worked seven years to get Rachel at first but ended up being Leah and then he worked uh Jacob worked another seven years again for Rachel but we see that Laban had plotted this he plotted this so he intended from the beginning to sell his daughter for labor concerning you know Jacob so he didn't really even care about his daughters all he cared about was the money that he was going to get so that that's a shame man and you still got men and women who are like this today but verse 16 it says for all the riches for all the riches which God have taken from our father who took it from uh, Laban God took it from now he looking at uh, Jacob man Jacob took my riches he took my stuff man Ooh, all to do this and that to him uh -uh. but Rachel and Leah had some sense for all the riches which God have taken from our father. So God took that from, so all that deceit Laban was working, basically ripping Jacob off and um, using him for labor and stuff like that. Hey, God remembered all that stuff that he did. And just like our enemies, how we in these lands, building up these nations, working for peanuts, guess what? When this thing is all said and done, just like in time past, we spoiled the Egyptians, we're going to spoil these nations. Everything that they ever um, held back from us in terms of monetary gain and all that kind of stuff, we're going to get all of that stuff. Oh, we're going to get all of that stuff that belonged to us anyway. So that's why the heathen, hey, yeah, yeah, work us all you want for all of the the riches you going to get because guess what them riches that you going to get it's going to all go to us in the end so I don't even worry about it uh, let's see did I read all the 16 no I didn't the last part of it it says oh yeah for all the riches which God have taken from our father that is ours and our children's now then whatsoever God have said unto thee do okay 17 now I'm going to read 17 through 24 because we're going to see why through verses 17 through 24 we're going to see why Laban wasn't blessed by God anyway we're going to see why he was cursed because Laban was cursed you don't serve God you're cursed that's just the way it is but we're going to see why Laban 
wasn't prosperous before Jacob and after Jacob. We're going to see why he wasn't prosperous. And we're going to find out something about the Miss Beautiful Rachel. Okay, 17. It says, Then Jacob rose up and set his sons and his wives upon camels, and he carried away all his cattle and all his goods which he had gotten, the cattle of his getting, which he had gotten in Padanaram, for to go to Isaac, his father, in the land of Canaan, because he's returning back uh, to the land of his father, the land of his kindred. That's where he's going. And it says, for to go to Isaac, his father, in the land of Canaan, 19. And Laban went to shear his sheep. So Laban went to shear and shave his sheep. And Rachel had stolen the images that were her father's. Okay, so now we're going to find out two things here. So the reason why Laban wasn't prosperous before Jacob and after Jacob, because of these graven images. So we see here that Laban served other gods. And when you do that, you're not going to be prosperous. And on top of that, Rachel, now we don't know about Leah, but Rachel served other gods as well. Otherwise, she wouldn't have stolen them images. Because if you serve God, them images ain't nothing to you. You don't want nothing to do with them things. Them things you don't want to take of the accursed thing. And that them images that were made for worship are the accursed thing. Same accursed thing that Achan took end up getting Israel, uh, the children of Israel killed, and he ended up getting killed him and his family because of mess like this. Okay, so we find out. That Laban was an idol worshiper. Rachel was an idol worshiper. On top of that, Rachel was a thief. Okay? So, I'm telling y'all, and you know how I already feel about this subject, but it's like I told y'all, man, beauty is not everything. Hey, Leah didn't look as good as uh, Rachel, but you didn't see Leah stealing. Who stole? Rachel. And remember, Rachel was beautiful. I'm telling y'all, man, beauty is vain and beauty is deceitful. And I hate to say it, but mo most people that are so-called handsome, beautiful, pretty, fair, whatever you want to call them, this ain't all of them because I'll be telling a lie. But majority of those kind of people are a mess with a capital M, a lot of them. And remember, Satan is beautiful. And it was, that by, it was because of that very beauty that his heart was lifted up. Thought he could do what he wanted do, to do because he was uh, beautiful. Thought that he should be God because he was beautiful. Now what happened? See, that beauty sometimes can be a blessing and a curse. So you men out there that's looking for wives, hey, you need to get with someone the most high brain you. And hey, that woman may not be a 10. She may be a 7 or a 6. But guess what? You're going to get a virtuous woman, a woman full of wisdom, a woman that's going to love you. Because I'm telling you, you going after these beautiful women and stuff, a lot of them, not all of them, that's a disclaimer. But a lot of them, I'm telling y'all, they are dragging. you like, oh man, I really want her, man. She's so fine, man. Oh boy, look at her body, man. Look at the way she talk, man. She sounds so nice. And then you get her and she be the damn devil. That's why you got to stop going off of the appearance. That's what the Lord told Samuel. He said, see, y'all men, y'all judge by appearance. I don't look at that. I look at this. And from reading stuff like that, that's what the Lord taught me. You need to look at this. This is what's important. And see, this right here is what's going to make you be a winner in the long term. Because, you know, lust is short term. But this right here, that's long term, okay? But let's keep going, guys, because I don't want to get off into that. So uh, verse 20, and it says, And Jacob stole away unawares to Laban the Syrian, and that he told him not that he fled. All right? So Rachel stole those images without her father knowing, and naturally... Because of that, it's almost like Jacob stole it because 
it's in Rachel's possession who is with Jacob. So, hey, it's just like Jacob has it. Okay, and on top of that, you know, hey, Jacob was gone. He just left Laban, you know, he went off on his journey and went. 21, it says, so he fled with all that he had and he rose up and passed over the river and set his face toward the Mount Gilead. So Jacob just dipped. He was like, yo, I'm not wasting no more time. It's time for me to go. I got to leave. So we see here that Laban didn't get a chance to see his daughters off. So that's going to cause an issue. Verse 22. And it was told Laban on the third day that Jacob was fled. So, you know, Laban going to be like, huh, what? He left. He didn't say bye or nothing. They let me see my children off and he just left. 23. And he took his brethren with him. He just prayed about it. No, he ain't just, oh, I'm just going to pray about it. No, he took his brethren just like Abraham did with him and pursued after him, pursue after Jacob seven days journey. So he took, he, he, he went after Jacob and he overtook him in the Mount Gilead, verse 24. Now, before Laban could do anything, say or do anything to Jacob, something happened, 24. And God came to Laban the Syrian in a dream by night and said unto him, take heed that thou speak not to Jacob, either good or bad. In other words, God was telling Laban, listen here, Laban, that's my servant and I got my eyes on him and I'm watching him and I'm watching you. You better not say nothing good or bad. In other words, keep your trap shut or I'm going to split your wig. That's how the Lord see that, man. Boy, the Lord don't play, man, about the righteous. And um, I forgot to read something to y'all. I meant to uh, read this, but let's go ahead and go to uh, James chapter 4. And I know it ain't really a lot of precepts this time around. And that's because uh, there are really no precepts that are needed for this chapter. This is just kind of a chapter that you read on through. But this... Uh, scripture right here was concerning uh, Laban being a covetous man. I just forgot to read it. But uh, James chapter 4 and verse 2, it says, now this is uh, concerning Laban because remember Laban had to use Jacob. That was, Laban had to use Jacob and we know he perceived that God was blessing him because of Jacob. Why? Because Jacob served him. Not because of Laban, but because of Jacob. But the problem was, is Laban could have been blessed too if he served the Most High. But we found out that he had some images and that's why he wasn't blessed. Because he was worshipping them, them idols, them images. Those were images that were made to be worshipped. I can make images all I want. That ain't going to do nothing. But when you make images that are meant to be worshipped, meaning I'm making images so I can worship them, okay, you ain't going to prosper because you got other gods before the most high. And guess what? He's going to curse you and he's going to curse your hands. But look at what uh, our forefather James says. He says, ye lust, right? Just like Laban. It say, because uh, from what Rachel and Leah said, Laban was a covetous man. Ye lust and have not. Ye kill and desire to have and cannot obtain. Ye fight in war, yet ye have not because you ask not. See, that's the problem with the wicked. They doing all of this stuff to get these material things because I don't want to just relegate it just to money, but there's a lot of things that the wicked desire. But see, the problem is if you don't serve the most high, those material things are going to run through your hands like sand. You know how you put sand in your hand, right? And no matter how tight you try to hold that sand, it seems to always go through the cracks 
of your fingers. And it may take a while, but eventually all that sand is going to run through the, the creases of your fingers. See, because the wicked, they don't want to serve God, but yet they want all of these things. But see, if you just serve God and then you ask him for these things, he will give them to you. But you know, the wicked don't want to do that because see, they want all of these things without having to serve God because they like, listen, I want all of this stuff, man, but I'm just going to be honest. I don't want to serve God because I, I kind of just want to do my own thing. But at the same time, at the same time, I want to be prosperous. Hey, listen, it ain't going to happen. The Lord going to make sure that even these nations um, that we under right now. You know, they got all this money and all of this stuff on everything. But I'm telling you, all of that stuff going to perish from their hands. Why? Because you got to come to nothing. You may have it for a while. The wicked, sometimes it's how it is for the wicked. They have something for a while, but eventually it perish out of their hands. Why? Because you're a cursed of God. And you're going to lose everything that you got. But. Let's go ahead, guys, and um, let's go back to Genesis 31, and now I got to try to figure out where the heck I was. Okay, 24. I'm going to read that again. It says, And God came to Laban the Syrian in a dream by night, and said unto him, Take heed that thou speak not to Jacob, either good or bad. In other words, God was letting uh, Laban know, Hey, man, I'm watching you. And depending on what you do, I'm going to split your wig. So you better basically tread lightly. That's what he's pretty much saying. Now I'm going to read uh, 25 through 30. Because now Laban is going to uh, question Jacob. Then Laban overtook Jacob. Now Jacob had pitched his tent in the mount. And Laban with his brethren pitch, pitched in the mount of Gilead. And Laban said to Jacob, what hast thou done? Thou hast stolen away unawares to me. So he realized his idol images were gone. And it says, and carry away my daughters and captives. I mean, and carried away my daughters, Rachel and Leah, as captives taken with the sword. Because that wasn't a good look. All of a sudden, some stuff missing. And then next thing you know, Laban getting word that Jacob fled. So it's like, wait, so because, you know, Laban trying to put two and two together. He's like, wait a minute, my stuff gone. Then he, he next thing, you know, you know, his servants and stuff running to him. Yeah, Jacob fled. He gone. So he looking like, well, darn, what the heck happened? So now, you know, that's why Laban is questioning him. He like, man, and then you carried away my daughters as captives taken with the sword. In other words, I ain't even get to see my daughters. Are you just left? 27. Wherefore didst thou flee away secretly and steal away from me and didst not tell me that I might have sent thee away with mirth and with songs, with tabret and with heart? Because that's something that they did. They would often do that. 28. And has not and has not suffered me to kiss my sons and my daughters, meaning his grandsons. And has not suffered me to kiss my sons and my daughters. Has It says, Thou has now done foolishly in doing so. 29. He said, It is in the power of my hand to do you hurt. So Laban is saying, Jacob, basically the way things stand right now, I could split your wig, basically. But just because of the way it looks. I could get you. That's what he's saying. But Laban said, but the God of your father spake unto me yesternight, saying, take heed that thou speak to Jacob, either good nor bad. In other words, he told me to tread lightly and don't do nothing foolish, basically. 30. And now, though thou wouldest needs be gone, because thou sore longest after thy father's house, yet wherefore have thou stolen my what? My gods. Oh, so now we see why, like I told you, why Laban wasn't prosperous. He was serving other gods. And Rachel, she stole those gods, which lets you know 
Rachel what? She regarded those gods. Not so for Leah. Rachel, she stole it. Because if you served nothing but God and only regarded your God, you wouldn't regard no other gods and you wouldn't have no other gods before him. See? 31. And it says, now I'm going to read verses 31 through 35, okay? Because uh, Laban is going to begin searching for his idol gods that was stolen by Rachel. Okay, and it says, And Jacob answered and said to Laban, Because I was afraid, for I said, Peradventure thou wouldest take by force thy daughters from me. So Jacob is saying, Listen, I went ahead and just took Rachel Leah. I booked it because he didn't say it, but basically the type of man you are, I thought you were just going to take your daughters that I so hardly worked for away from me and then send me off on my way. So that's why Jacob did what he did. So verse 32. Now Jacob says, with whomsoever thou findest thy gods, let him not live. Now, I want y'all to keep that line in mind because God is going to honor that. It says, before our brethren, discern thou which is thine with me and take it to thee. For Jacob knew not that Rachel had stolen them. And later we're going to find, and later God is going to take Rachel's life in childbearing. But for now, let's keep reading 33. And Laban went into Jacob's tent and into Leah's tent because, uh, okay. Yeah. He says, and Laban went into Jacob's tent and into Leah's tent. And into the two maid servants tent because he's he's rummaging around. He's looking for these his idol gods. It says, but he found them not. Then he went. Then went he out of Leah's tent and enter into Rachel's tent. Uh oh, because Rachel's the one that got it. Thirty four. Now Rachel. Now Rachel had taken the images and put them in the camel's furniture and sat upon them. <laughs> <laughs> so she basically had like the little camel's furniture, which is like a satchel type thing. She, so she had like a satchel and it was in that satchel. And so she put it in the satchel and she sat under, which lets you know that uh, Rachel, she was wearing some type of uh, a dress. That's what she was wearing. So she was able to hide that satchel under herself. And Laban searched all the tent, but found them not. 35. And she said to her father, let it not displease my Lord that I cannot rise up before thee for the custom of women is upon me. So, <laughs> you know, she's saying basically I'm on my monthly and I, I can't, you know, get up right now and all of that kind of stuff. And he searched, but found not the images. Yeah, because it was underneath her. So we know that Rachel has the images, but Laban obviously didn't find them. But nevertheless, the Lord was going to honor those words of Jacob. And we know that later the Lord was going to take Rachel's life in childbearing. So now let's go ahead and read verses 36 through 42, because now Jacob, he's going to strive with Laban once Laban, once he uh, see that Laban couldn't find them images among them. It says, and Jacob was wroth and chode with Laban. And Jacob answered and said to Laban, where is my trespass? In other words, Jacob felt like he was being accused, but Rachel really did have the images. It says what? So that's, so this is another thing. Rachel, the so-called beautiful woman, our foremother, with her sin, she could have gotten Jacob and them killed. Now, it was the Lord that intervened, but that stuff that she pulled, that could have gotten them killed, man, because they didn't play that stealing back in the day. You didn't do that stuff. You got your wig split. So this beautiful woman ended up bringing trouble on Jacob. That's why I tell y'all men, man, be careful of chasing after these so-called beautiful women. Because a lot of men, they are dragging and they don't bring nothing but trouble to the house. But anyway, let's keep on reading verse 36. And it says, 
Jacob answered and said to Laban, What is my trespass and what is my sin that thou hast hotly pursued after me? 37. Whereas thou hast searched all my stuff and hast found of and what hast thou found of all thy household stuff? He said, You ain't even find nothing. Set it here before my brother and thy brethren that way we may judge betwixt us both. Okay. The dog boy Jacob pretty mad though. 38. This 20 years have I been with thee. Thy ewes and thy she goats have not cast their young, and the rams of thy flocks have I not eaten. So Jacob, you know, basically telling Laban how he really feel. That which was torn of beasts, I brought not unto thee. I bear the loss of it. Of my hand didst thou require it whether stolen by day or stolen by night. Thus I was in the day, thus I was in the day, the drop consumed me and the frost by night, my sleep departed from me. So he basically telling man, he basically telling Laban, man, listen, man, in the day I was freaking thirsty as heck. He said, man, at night, he said I was freezing. He said, man, I didn't even get no sleep. Okay, because remember, he was looking after all Laban stuff, man. So, man, Jacob went through a lot, man, being on the Laban. And that's why the Lord ended up blessing uh, Jacob and ended up taking away from Laban. 41. Thus have I been 20 years in thy house. I served thee 14 years for thy two daughters and six Okay, in six years for thy cattle, and thou hast changed my wages ten times. So, man, wow, man. So, think about it, y'all. Now, the way we read it, it's like Jacob was there just a little bit with Laban to get Rachel Lee, all stuff, and then he was gone. No, he was there 16, I mean, uh, 20 years that's a lot of time man that passed by 20 years that mean uh isaac rebecca and man they hadn't seen man they hadn't seen jacob in a long in 20 something years i said 20 something but 20 years they ain't seen they son in 20 years so that's a lot of time so when you're reading in scripture it just make it look like these events just happen back to back no man 20 years so, I mean, Jacob endured a lot, man, for them 20 years. But anyway, guys, let's go ahead and uh, let's keep reading. Verse 41, it says, uh, Thus I have been 20 years in thy house. I served thee 14 years for thy two daughters and six years for thy cattle. And thou hast changed my wages 10 times. Why? Because he wanted Jacob to keep working for him because he kept being blessed. 42. He said, except the God of my father, the God of Abraham, and the fear of Isaac had been with me, surely thou had sent me away now empty. So he said, if it wasn't for the Lord, he said, man, you would have did some wickedness. You would have sent, you would have sent me away with nothing. But it was the Lord who looked out for me. That's what he's basically saying. He said, God hath seen my affliction and the labor of my hands. And rebuked thee yesterday. So that's what he's saying. He said the reason why I'm prospering. And all of that stuff. He said cut the most high. He said because if it wasn't for my God. You would have sent me away empty. And you know why? Because you are a covetous. And you are a wicked man. Boy Jacob laying into his uncle boy. My goodness. Woo he laying into him boy. Now that I read that, let's go ahead and read verses 43 and 50 because now Jacob and Laban about to make a covenant. And Laban answered and said unto Jacob, These daughters are my daughters, and these children are my children, to my grandchildren, and these cattle are my cattle, and all that thou seest is mine. And what can I do this day unto these my daughters? Or unto their children which they have born. Now therefore come thou, let us make a covenant, I and thou, 
and let it be a, for a witness between me and thee. And Jacob took a stone and set it up for a pillar. So they're, they're making the covenant, 46. And Jacob said unto his brethren, gather stones. And they took stones and made a heap. And they did eat there upon the heap. And Laban called it Jerga Sedutha. And Jacob called it Gilead. I meant Gilead. And Laban said, This heap is a witness between me and thee this day. Therefore, the name of it was called Gilead. 49, it says in Mizpah, For he said, The Lord watch between me and thee when we are absent from one another. Verse 50, uh, now, this is what Laban is saying. If thou shalt afflict my daughter. So, yeah, even though Laban is a mess, biologically, he does still care about his daughters. He says, if thou afflict my daughters, or if thou shalt take other wives besides my daughters, no man is with us. See, God is witness between me and thee. So he just asking Jacob, hey, you know, just treat my daughters right, man. That's all he asking. So now I'm going to go ahead and uh, read 51 through 55 because now Laban is going to see off his uh, daughters and he's going to see off his grandsons. Okay, and it says, And Laban said unto Jacob, Behold, uh, yeah, he says, um, And Laban said to Jacob, Behold this heap and behold this pillar, which I have cast between me and thee. This heap be a witness, and this pillar. Ooh, excuse me, y'all. This heap be a witness, and this pillar be a witness, that I will not pass over this heap to thee, and thou shalt not pass over this heap and this pillar unto me for harm. Okay, so we're not going to harm each other. Okay, it says, The God of Abraham, the God of Nahor, and the God of their father judge betwixt us and Jacob swear by the fear of his father, Isaac, the God of Israel. Okay, 54. Then Jacob offered sacrifice upon the mount and called his brethren to eat bread. And they did eat bread and tear it all night into the mount. And early in the morning, Laban rose up. And kissed his sons, meaning his grandsons, and his daughters, and blessed them. And Laban departed and returned unto his place. And that's the last that we will see of Laban. Okay. So that is it for that chapter, guys. Um, next chapter, uh, Esau, Jacob's brother, returns. They hadn't seen each other in a very long time. But uh, Jacob's brother Esau is going to return and they're going to meet again after a very long time of not seeing each other. So that's it for the chapter, guys. Hope you guys got some understanding. And with that, Shalom.